Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, It's, wow, it's a joy to to have you all here joining with us. And we still do have a number of people joining by Zoom. Good morning. Uh, (laughs) uh, Technology, right? It's it's great. Wonderful to be able to have you uh, who are joining us by Zoom. Um, Just a very couple of brief announcements regarding this service. Um, this is our this is Palm Sunday, and we and we celebrate and remember the the processional that that Jesus made into Jerusalem and towards the cross. And so that's why we're gathering out here. We'll be some of you I know are a little bit chilly. We'll be moving in very quickly. But um, and then all throughout this week, we have a number of um, Holy Week observances. We invite you to come back if you're able to on. Uh, Thursday, we have a noon service, but that noon service is over at King of Glory. We're sharing that, those daytime services with other, um, other churches. And then we'll meet here also at 7 o'clock in the evening Thursday uh, for Monday Thursday worship as well. And there we get to celebrate a number of First Communion uh, celebrations. And then on Good Friday, uh, we will have a noon service here, also shared with those other ELCA Lutheran churches and... Um, then also Good Friday at seven o'clock in the evening. We have a um, we have uh, an Easter vigil service that's just a lot of fun, a great way to celebrate Easter. That is going to be this year over. That's Saturday. That's over at Trinity Lutheran Church. And then we'll gather for Easter Sunday. We have a couple of different service opportunities. We're going to be gathering out here in the Memorial Garden for a sunrise service at six thirty. I know, it sounds a little chilly, right? Especially as you all are thinking, that's two hours earlier than now, right? Um, I promise we're going to make that one a little bit shorter. So, But but it's also a beautiful opportunity to celebrate the sunrise um, as we gather in a place where we we bury our loved ones and celebrate the resurrection in that time. So for all of us. And then we also have 815 and 1045 services as, as our normal service plans are. Um, this morning, hopefully you've seen and maybe even smelled a little bit that uh, we have a Palm Sunday breakfast. And so after worship, if you'd like to stick around, we invite you to come on into the fellowship hall and enjoy breakfast together with us. Um, and the, the other thing, you see a, a, a number of kids up here. We get to celebrate. Our, our children's choir is going to be um, singing for us in worship a little bit later. But as we process in... The very first thing we're going to do in the sanctuary is kids in Christ. And so if we have other kids, if you're, if you're out there, if you want to come up front and join us to lead the processional, and then we'll just go straight up to the front, you are welcome to do that. We'd love to have you join us. All right? Um, that's it. We'll begin with... Yeah, come on up, Zach. Um, we'll, we'll begin um, with... A, we uh, start with a narration throughout this whole service. We'll start with the Palm Sunday processional, of course, but then we move throughout and hear um, parts of the passion story as well. And so um, you'll hear a lot of, quite a bit of narration, the, the story directly from Luke's gospel as well. You can come on up, Graham. Come join us here. You get to help me lead. You want to stand up here? That's... So throughout the season of Lent, we've heard the promise that God fills us to the brim with abundance and expansive grace. We heard these stories, Jesus as a mother hen protecting her brood, prodigal sons who are welcomed into God's household, a fig tree that's nurtured with care and hope, even though it wouldn't produce, and precious oil that's poured out lovingly and freely. These sacred texts are brimming with a gospel of grace and love. So today we're invited into a meditation of the final days of Jesus' life as he moves into Jerusalem and finally reaches his destination at the cross. We join the story with Jesus as he enters Jerusalem. And this whole multitude of followers uh, shout joyfully with praise. And if they don't, or if they won't, or if they can't, shout their praises We hear in the gospel that even the stones will cry out. All of creation 
declares God's good news. The message of Jesus comes, coming to save rises above whatever noises we may hear in the world, even if the powers of the world may want to silence it. And so hear the word of the Lord. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Beth Bethanage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were there sent, departed, and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And the disciples said, The Lord needs it. The Lord, the Lord needs, needs it. it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. And the crowd said, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, and the crowd also said, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shut, shout out. him as we as we sing together i forgot to say at the beginning you may have noticed if you're already in the sanctuary um, we have some electrical problems on one side of the sanctuary so we have one screen working hopefully everybody can still see if you don't already have a palm branch they're going to be just inside the door here grab one and follow us in as we sing together and join this processional the words for this hymn are just inside of your bulletin so let us sing together I invite everybody here in the congregation as you found a seat. If you found a seat, you can be seated. 
And we can, you can all be seated up here with me. All right. So let's start, and I'll invite you all to start with me. We like to begin our time marking ourselves with the sign of the cross. And I'll, you can all join me if you'd like. We say, God be in my head, God be in my heart, God be on my left, and God be on my right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so some of you didn't get your palm branches because you were helping carry other things. Um, could we bring in some extra palm branches? Can I grab? Oh, you got some here. Um, because I want you to, to help me out here. So does anybody know why this is Palm Sunday? Why are we carrying palm branches? Annalise, why do you? Because it's Palm Sunday. Yeah, I already told you the answer. <laughs> That's right. That's pretty obvious. Why is it Palm Sunday? It seems kind of funny that we would have palm branches. What do you think? <clears throat> yeah. As Jesus rode in on a colt or a donkey, then people started waving palm branches. It's like, it's like when, uh, ha how many of you have been to a parade? Have you been to a parade? And you get, what are some of your favorite things you like to see in the parade? What? Oh, Santa Claus. At a, that's at a Christmas parade. Yeah? Floats. Yeah? No, it's, you, we have parades all time of the year, right? Floats, you said. There's, have you ever seen like, you know, my kids are in a marching band, so they, they like to move and sometimes the band has flags, right? Have you seen that? Yeah. There's all kinds of fun things that we, we do to celebrate in parades. Well, when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, that was, this was common for them. They had, they had two ways to celebrate an honored guest. And one was they'd go and, go and grab some branches and they'd wave their branches in celebration. This is like waving like uh, flags and banners. Yeah, that's right. They also put palm branches and it even says they spread their cloaks or their coats on the ground. They would take off their coats and they would, can you imagine they spreading coats all the way down the aisle here? They did that to welcome people. And a lot of us, that, that might sound a little bit strange, but have you, ever, have you ever watched something where, have you ever heard about rolling out the red carpet? Yeah, that's something we say that that's like the, this, waving our branches and putting coats on the ground is like rolling out the, the red carpet to say, hey, something important is going on. We have an honored guest this morning and he's coming into town. And who is that honored guest? Jesus. Yeah. And so that's why we, even today, um, why we did this processional in today to actually honor our special guest, Jesus, who's with us in worship every time we gather. So throughout this worship, if you hear times of praise, I invite you to wave your palm branches, hold on to these, wave them in celebration, okay? Because that's us joining, that's part of the story, to remember and to give thanks to God. All right. So let's pray. If, if you'll, I'll invite you to pray with me and, and uh, pr yeah, say after I say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for being with us today. thank you for being with us today. We honor you and we love you. Open our ears and open our hearts, open our hearts. to join your story today. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Okay, now, there's a lot of you up here. A lot of you have been here as we've worked on this memory verse. You want to help me? I, uh, I bet you all can help me, but because we've done this for a few weeks. And a number of you have already done this as a memory kind of thing to earn a candy bar. That's what we get to do, right? So, join with me. 
Join with Pastor Andrea. Palms down so you can use your hands so we can do our actions too. So set your palms down so you can use your hands <laughs> to do your actions too. All right. Child. Child. You are, are always, always with, with me. me. And all, all that, that is mine is, is yours. yours. Good job. All right. Now, I think, I was about to say you all can go back, but I think a number of sing. you, or is it, um, if you're in the children's choir, then you, or Sunday school, yeah, which I think is everybody, you can stay up here. If not, come over here and sit with me if, you, if you're not sure about, you know, if you don't know what's going on. <laughs> One day God called Jeremiah when he was just a kid, but Jeremiah felt unworthy, he nearly ran and hid, till God said, do not be afraid, for I will be with you, I'll help you know what words to say, I'll show you. Just a man, we are, we are 
we get to hear that that's a beautiful entry into us, uh, this, this part of the story as we move from the palm uh, processional into the rest of the, the passion narrative. And we hear how God does indeed call us all. So I invite you to, to open your ears and your hearts to hear how God calls us to hear this story of God's love. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. And he went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple, the, the temple police, about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. The word Hosanna is often sung with joy and, and glee on this day. We process in, we wave palm branches, and it's a celebration. But the truth is the word Hosanna means save us. The people along that parade route so many years ago were crying out Hosanna for Jesus to help because they knew this world is not as it should be. There is too much hurt. They were crying out, save us. So today we have our own Hosanna moment, crying out to God in celebration because we know who our God is but also that things still aren't right in the world, admitting even how we might be part of the problem. We've fallen short, we've betrayed God or each other, and we ask God to forgive us so that we can freely love God and our neighbors. So friends, in this time, as we enter into this Hosanna moment, I invite you to join with me as we confess our sin and our, our brokenness together, for there is too much hurt here. God of street parades and hosannas, we confess that we have to betray you by our own thoughts, words, and actions. You call us to speak out against oppression to speak up for love, and to speak hope to fear. But often we are silent. Unravel our fears, spark conviction in us. Give us the courage to shout, Hosanna, knowing that your word has power to forgive us, power to make all things new, and power even to make the songs cry out. Forgive us, God, and give us the will and the strength to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends in Christ, even when we are silent, even when we are scared, even when we choose to speak and maybe say the wrong things, God makes even the stones cry out of God's amazing work of reconciliation. So even if we may, might betray each other or God, the good news is we still belong to God. So rest in this promise and in this good news that you are forgiven. You are known and you belong to God today and every day. And so we shout out and I invite you to wave your palm branches Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Just as the owner of the house offered his home, and the disciples brought all that was needed to prepare for the Passover celebration, so we bring ourselves, our time, our money, everything we have been gifted to and give to God's mission as we prepare to receive Christ's presence in the meal and at his table. So I invite you, if you're visiting with us, know that uh, we, we don't expect visitors to give of offering, but this is part of our story as well, where we want to, to give and to provide for God's mission. So I invite you as we, as we pass around the offering plates to consider how, how each of us has been gifted to prepare for God's mission in our world.
Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation, and we are full to the brim because of you. Take and use the gifts we offer here, gifts from your abundance. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, the only food that truly fills and satisfies. Amen. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and all of the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which of them it could be who would do this? As we prepare to receive this meal as one of Jesus' own disciples gathered with him at this table, let us together prepare ourselves and our hearts by praying as our Lord taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and delete us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome to this meal, for Christ is the true host. And this is the true bread and wine that truly satisfied. And so I invite you all to receive this gift. First, we will uh, offer communion to those who are, are on Zoom um, or for those who are either unable or prefer not to come forward for Holy Communion. And if you are in that group here in our sanctuary, if you did not receive one of these communion kits... Um, and you prefer not or you're not able to come up, I ask you to just rip, put your hand in the air and we'll make sure that you get one of these now. Just one right over here. Okay, if you are at home, I invite you to take your bread, cracker, whatever you have, and if you are here in the sanctuary receiving communion with one of these kits, I op open that one side of the chalice with the wafer of bread and hear this promise for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now you can flip that chalice over, or if you're at home, take your wine or grape juice or water and hear this promise that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now for the rest of you here in the sanctuary, if you are able and desire to come forward, uh, we'll invite you forward at the instruction of the ushers. Um, you'll receive a small piece of a uh, wafer of bread and then you can move to the outside and, re and receive Wine or grape juice from the silver trays. Wine is red and grape juice is yellow colored.
also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to them, Lord... I am ready to go with you to prison and And to to death. death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And when he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas one of the twelve was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with with the the sword? sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This This man man was was also also with with him. him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, Woman, I I do do not not know him. him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You You also are are one of them. them. But Peter said, Man, Man, I am am not. not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, 
Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. And when day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they asked him, Are you the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. I invite you to stand as you are able. They began to accuse him, saying, we found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he has, sent us, he has sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away, Away with, with this fellow! fellow. Release, release Barabbas, Barabbas for us! us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. 
But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. And he released the man that they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. You may be seated. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your own children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do not do this, if they do this, when the wood is green, what will happen? when it is dry. Two others who were criminals, they were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus. As we began this service and as we now we approach near the end of the story, um, we started by reflecting on that, that promise from Jesus that even when we are unable to speak, even when, uh, when we are unable to give our praises, that the stones will cry out. So in your bulletin, you'll find little pieces of paper that are kind of pictured like stones. And in that... I invite you if, you, if you would like, to take a pen, take a few moments here at this time, as you begin to journey through Holy Week, to consider what truths for you or for the community or for the world you think must be spoken out loud. What questions maybe do you have for God? What confessions do you bring to Jesus? Any of these thoughts that you think must be spoken, um, I invite you to write on these paper rocks, and we will come around the the sanctuary and collect those in just a few moments. And we're going to place those rocks at the foot of the cross here as, uh, as something that supports and holds up our Lord, just as he supports and holds us up. So I invite you into a few moments of silence as we listen to music and ponder those truths for us.
God, let our prayers come before you as we bring all of these concerns and petitions, offering these truths that must be spoken, yet knowing that if we don't speak for truth, all of your creation cries out in truth. In addition to these truths and confessions or questions, we come to you in prayer, praying for those we love, for those we don't like or can't understand, for those in worship with us today, those in front of us, behind us, beside us, those who are drawn near to us through the gift of technology. Hear us as we pray for those who suffer from violence and loss, abuse and war. Hear us as we give you thanks for the goodness of life, the gifts of creation, the gifts of home and family, free time and employment, friends and church family. God, you are our great healer, and so we bring to you the concerns of those close to this community today as we pray for the Barella family as Mutt's mom, Mary Jean, is recovering after two strokes, for Laverne, Susan Shire's mother, and for those concerns that are printed in our bulletin this morning. As we pray for Steve, Steve, Ginger, for friends of Sophia and Lane after a car accident, for Clay, Tammy, Linda, Nastia, for Dave, Mary Jo, Tara, Elaine, Naomi, and Becky. We also lift up to you those who are living with and struggling with cancer as we pray for Marjorie, Linda, Glenda, Vicki, and Brandon, Christine, Alexis, Cheryl, Khaleesi, and Sandy. God, even the stones cry out, and so we give you thanks for your love and your forgiveness. Open our, our, our ears and our hearts to hear the promise of your salvation in this story. We pray this all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. There were the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let, Let him, him save, save himself, himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you, Are you not, not the Messiah? Messiah? Save, Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
Having said this, he breathed his last. I invite the congregation to stand. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly Certainly this this man man was was innocent. innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and laid it in a rock hem tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. When they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandments. 